Before we begin, John, Fernanda, will you please come uh, in front of the altar? And please face the congregation. My dear brothers and sisters, um, I presented at our last parish committee meeting the names of John and Fernanda Harrington as new prospects of our parish. The, uh, the parish has voted and we welcome you to our family and we pray that God's blessings might be upon you. You can turn to the altar. would like to offer the two of you blessings. May Almighty God bless you in his mercy and make you aware of his saving wisdom. Amen. May he strengthen your faith and with his love, so that you may persevere in all good works. Amen. May he direct your steps to himself and show you how to walk in charity and peace. Amen. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, John, and upon you, Fernanda. And we welcome you to our Christian family. The peace and blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God. of your conscience. Yeah. Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord protects the stranger, sustains the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the way of the wicked. The Lord is Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son has taught us that all we possess we have in trust from you. Help us to be faithful in our stewardship so that in earning we may be just and in spending honorable. May we not seek our own indulgences, but your glory and the good of others. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion. Lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches, they eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, my soul. Blessed he who keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. The maker of heaven and earth, the seas and his all is in them, who keeps faith forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus, 
who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will himself also call and not be heard. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and died, died sumptuously every day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, Remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's House, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, O oh, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Then the king will reply 
Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we learned from when we were young and went to catechetical instruction that God gave Moses Ten Commandments. And the fourth commandment is, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. And we keep Sundays uh, a special day, which is the Lord's Sabbath. And it is on Sunday because the Lord rose from the dead on that first Easter Sunday. While Jesus had a ministry, he observed the holy day of obligation, the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, he taught. And so we gather in church on the Sabbath, away from the outside world, to reflect and to hear the Word of God. I believe that today's story is a very important story that has a clear and a distinctive message, not only to Christians, but to the whole world. In today's Gospel story, there are two main characters. A rich man and a beggar whose name was Lazarus. It should be noted that in all the teachings of Jesus, as found in the Gospels, this is the only story where Jesus gives a name to a person linked to his teaching. Let us look briefly at these two characters. The rich man. He lived a life of opulence. He wears purple, a color that was set aside for the high priest in the Jewish faith and those of royal stock. Second, not only does he have daily meals, but every meal is described as a feast, a smorgasbord of exotic foods and probably the finest of wines. Another interesting aspect did you know that in the days of Jesus, they did not have forks, knives, and spoons like we do, but they used their hands and they wiped their dishes with bread. Afterward, they threw the bread outside to scavengers like pigs and dogs and in today's story, a poor beggar like Lazarus. Lazarus. A beggar who sits at the door of the rich man. The rich man probably passed them time and time again. Now Lazarus suffers from ulcerated sores on his legs. In addition, he is pestered by dogs who come to not only take away the scraps of the discarded bread from the table of the rich man, but also the dogs torment him by licking his infected wounds. Lazarus has no strength to fight them off. So, such was the state of Lazarus. In all the five major religions, we hear of a word, it's called karma, or fate, and is associated with cause and effect. In the Christian faith, Jesus talks about karma. Did he not teach us? that to the measure we judge one another will be the same measure by which we are judged by God. Today's story is one of karma and fate. And so the story goes, Lazarus dies and is received into the bosom of Abraham. The importance of this phrase is that Abraham received the first covenant from God, and it was considered that the righteous would be received into the bosom of Abraham. When the rich man died, his fate or his karma found him in the netherworld where he was in torment. The story tells us that the rich man raised his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus at his side. To the rich man, his fate was that he was separated from the covenant with God, and that there was a great chasm, 
that separated the two. In their lives and in their deaths, their roles were reversed. And so what is the message of today's story? I believe it can be summed up in another story that Jesus taught, which is known as the parable of the sheep and goats. It is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. And I'd like to share this story with you. Jesus taught, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and he will put the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the beginning of the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came and visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison? and saw you, the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of the brethren and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these you did not do for me and so my brothers and sisters in our world there are so many Laz Lazaruses whether it be the homeless who sleep on the streets or families who send their children to bed with little food or the poor who live out of a plastic bag or the lonely who have no one who cares for them? The story of Lazarus, my dear brothers and sisters, calls upon all of us to help whenever and whatever, or I'm sorry, whenever or wherever we can, because there will be a day when we will all be called upon to make an accounting of our stewardship. And it will be on that day that our fate rests upon our actions of not only what we did in life, but also what we did not do. So may we all learn and grow in wisdom and understanding from the teachings of Jesus. And may we, my dear brothers and sisters, see Jesus in the eyes of those in need. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in 
one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Yeah. 
and ever-living God. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true, orthodox, and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us pray for the sick, the suffering and the dying. Let us pray for the homeless and for the hungry. Let us pray for all neglected and abused children in our world, as well as for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we also remember in prayer those defending our nation, who serve in the various military services. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you this sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so grave and sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, 
taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name, their hearts who are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after the, their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Peter and Paul's also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day. 
that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins. And from every evil, keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Oh, 
body and the two sides. The body and the other arms. The body and the arms. The body. himself to be true for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them. Hear our prayers said and sent this day to your majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord we pray this day. Amen.
sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man, man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank Thanks be to God. Praise God from the sacrament. Before I go on, I want to thank the women and the men of our parish who came yesterday to make pierogi. This is something that is a labor of love, for we are doing this for the good of our church. And again, I thank you. I bring to mind some of the announcements. Um, before I go on, also I want to thank Shirley uh, Mitlitsky Floyd and Mary Lou Fortier for their time and effort in cleaning our church this past week, as well as the parish hall. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Mary Lou. Um, on Tuesday, there's going to be a meeting of the strategic planning group that will meet over at the rectory. I put some information in. Uh, the bulletin, Mr. Larry Gagnon, who is actually a member of Holy Trinity in Manchester, New Hampshire, We'll be talking about uh, the use of social media, and we will be upgrading our Facebook and website pages. Um, also attending, um, Shirley and Mary Tudrin and Sue DeBrinzi. So I thank you dear ladies, uh, so we can move forward on, on this. Um, I'm, I have scheduled on Friday uh, at 11 o'clock um, a rehearsal of the Echo Choir. Uh, next Saturday, um, I'm going to offer Holy Mass at 7.30 like we did yesterday. And um, there, there will be the session two for Pierogi to be made. If you can, please come and help. Um, unfortunately, I will be uh, attending, well, I should say, unfortunately I will not be here, but I will be attending 
a meeting of the Central Seniorate of the Eastern Diocese of our church at our sister parish in Northampton. Also, if you look at the, the schedule of Holy Masses that are to be offered, Friday is actually the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And I've already mentioned to a few, but at three o'clock in the afternoon, those of you who wish to bring your pets, dogs and cats, and um, I don't know how many have really exotic pets, but there will be a blessing of the animals on the steps of our, of our church. Uh, next Sunday, um, Holy Mass, of course, fellowship hour, but there is also a special parish meeting. I talked to the Prime Bishop this past week, and uh, we are waiting to receive a mandate from our Prime Bishop um, for the purpose of a representative of our parish who will be attending the upcoming special synod that will be held on Friday, October 25th. And so, therefore, I ask that you please attend as I call this meeting um, in, uh, as outlined in the Constitution of our church. I also put in a, a small article uh, that there's going to be a harvest dinner at St. Valentine's on Sunday, October 13th. Um, let's see, what else besides the pierogi? Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to announce. Anybody else? Any intentions for sick, um, for God's blessings? I do bring to mind that this week it should be an interesting week because we have um, um, feast days, not only of St. Francis, but also, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have the schedule right in front of me, but also I think tomorrow is going to be uh, for uh, St. Michael, if I'm not mistaken. In, in, the, in the church, we, we recognize actually four archangels. Let's see if I can remember. There is Michael, there is Gabriel, there is Raphael, and there is Uriel, U-R-I-E-L. And so the archangels are the ones that have uh, dominion over all the angels. And so if you can, please remember uh, the prayers as you see the outline say a little bit of a prayer uh, especially Michael who is the protector of um, all uh, Christians and also one who leads the faithful back unto God God bless have a good day and may you have a good week In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.